on this computer. There we go. Share screens. So we're going to dive into this right now. Right now. Themes. Okay. So we're going to dive into themes today, beautiful people. Sweet. Okay. This goes. Oops. Wrong one. <laughs> it's not themes. Where's my themes at? Come on. That? No? Right here. Yeah, right here. Okay, cool. So we're going to dive right into this today. Um, so guys, so what's cool about all the students in this course right now is that everybody gives or take knows their, their niche, right? You know, Luke's all about travel, you know, and, and like, you know, Paul's about productivity and so on. And it's like, so everybody relatively knows their, their niche. And so, and so this, I wanted to record and this even dives into more in depth of, of figuring out more on your niche. Um, because, because once you figure out your niche, there is basically, it allows your audience to either follow you or not follow you. Right. Because like I said, like millennials, 83% of people are using Instagram that they're millennials and they, they realistically have like, you know, low attention span. And so they would give like your profile five seconds at best to look at. Right. So they'll look at it. They'll either say, Oh my God, I really love the content and they will follow you. So once you get to know your niche and we get to theme out the page is super important. You get to curate. So again, going back to like a conversation I had with Julie, um, it's that, it's that, you know, making this page and your Instagram page all about you reflecting on you. What I love about, uh, Luke is that, is that you put like want to be merman. I love that to bits because like, it just shows that you're fun and, and just like really, you know, it's, it's all you represents you. Right. So that's all that really matters. As long as you love it, that's all because it really does show more and more. So, a few questions you have to ask yourself, right, is, you know, what's my Instagram page going to be about? Take time to see uh, what you like to showcase on the page and, and, and start by looking at your passion. So for me, it was like always about fitness, traveling, motivation, self-improvement. And these are the things that I really, really curate more and more into my page more than ever before. Um, so a quick exercise. And then again, like if you guys, like I said, most of you, everybody here knows their niche, but taking time again, just to write down on a piece of paper, 10 things that you really enjoy and enjoy doing for free. Right. Because, uh, this also really would tie in into monetization later on as well too. Right. Um, so a passion is something, like I said, you, you could do, you know, that just doesn't feel like time is time is basically feels like irrelevant. Like it'll pass an hour. feels like a minute. Right. Everybody knows that. Um, so I follow uh, Loss LeBlanc and he's like a travel YouTuber vlogger and I love his content because it's all curated around travel and amazing, uh, you know, amazing like backdrops and it looks, just looks so good. Right. Um, so this is what it means by theming it out. Um, you know, showcasing, you know, your work, uh, be consistent with your post, um, and really represents you. What's, what's really important. And again, it's different for everybody. And then again, it just keeps people coming back to your content over and over. I'm going to show you another example. I'm going to get out of here really quickly. Cause I had an example up here. Um, I follow this photographer. I love him a bit. Alan. Um, if you guys can check this out, do you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys see it or not? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone? None. It's not in the way. Okay. So, um, Alan's from Toronto and it's so cool. Like, look at this content. Look at this amazingness. So his is like high quality photography and, and everybody knows him for that. And, and look at all these amazing things that he can curate. So again, he knows his niche photography. And then because of this, it's easy for sponsors and people to come and reach out to you once that time comes, right? Because I'm at the point where for me personally, they're sending me stuff more and more and I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And they, they understand what I love. And again, it's, it's all about making it easier for your audience to, to know that. Right. So again, people hire him for like all these amazing photos. He just got back from Jordan. So cool. So cool. But yeah. So back to this, you know, photos, you know, uh, taking extra time to learn like, you know, basics of making a great, photo. And again, this is going to be a later module. Um, it's a lot of people who here has used filters. I want to know, just no, no. Okay, good, good. So it's very seldom that I use, uh, filters anymore. Um, only because it's very generic and it's very, um, 
I, I would say, I would say, you know, like it's just like everybody's using it. And so for whatever reason, I want to make it unique, right? So I use a lot of the, the adjustments. So the brightness, contrast and everything like that. And I just play around with that. So um, Julie, uh, for you as well too, it's just like um, one day, whenever you have the time, just post, whenever you post something, don't use a, f- a filter and uh, go into like the, the adjustments. Like, and it's so fun to kind of adjust it and try to make it brighter and make it more appealing, make something pop out. And again, this is going to be a future module, so don't worry about it. Um, be consistent with your theme. So, so again, like, you know, Lost LeBlanc, I love his uh, content. Alan, let's just for example, for Alan, everybody knows his content is high-end photography, right? It'd be silly and weird. You guys would be confused once he posts up something about food, right? Like he just ate McDonald's. It just didn't, doesn't make sense, right? So, so again, making sure you're being consistent with your theme and sticking to it is super important and making it easy for everybody is super key. Um, something I personally do, so commit to a time to post, whether it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, five o'clock in, you know, in the afternoon, evenings, whatever it is. And this is more about you guys experimenting on this, um, figuring out when your audience can expect your content to come out more and more. I used to just post at 12 o'clock. And then if I didn't, if I go in past that, I would, I wouldn't post. <laughs> I would only post at 12. Um, it's just because it works with me. And then that's when like I, in my head, um, I know my audience that they're in their corporate nine to five job. Um, they're heavily into fitness. So they, everybody eats lunch. So usually when people eat lunch, they scroll through Instagram and they just look and stuff. Right. So I usually post at 12. So that's lunchtime for everybody to get a second to look at my content. It'd be awesome. Get motivated for the day. And that's what, that's what I envision. Right. I'm again, just through experimenting. And I see a lot of um, engagements through that time. You guys can copy me with that as well too. There's really no right or wrong and just have fun with it. That's, that's the key component here. It's, it's, uh, I had a conversation today as well too, that, that, you know, um, about making your Instagram page more and more yours. Um, this is what it goes towards. Like it ties in together with your brand and attracts your 100, you know, sorry, 1000 true fans. This, these are your raving hard, diehard fans that loves you, that loves your content. And this is weighs more than, than the amount of likes and everything. Right. So for me, I always take time to message people and, and tell them that, you know, thank you for taking the time to message me. And it's so fun and engaging. So again, now it's your turn later on. So after this, just go on and try and, you know, take a look at your page and take a look at your, um, how you can you curate it in a, in, in a way that really represents you, right? So we're going to jump into any questions. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes for questions. Just let me know. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Oh, go yes. ahead. Um, the, you're talking about um, like theme in your post. I was watching a YouTube video by, I can't remember his first name, but the last name is McKinnon. You used a picture of him in the last week. Yes, Peter That's McKinnon. Example. Love him. Peter McKinnon. I thought it was Peter. Yeah. Um, I watched his video about um, sort of like theming your Instagram. Yeah. And one of the things that he talked about was, um, using, I can't remember what it's called. It's not a filter, but it's a, when you go into like Photoshop, you can like run an action and, you know, it applies all these effects. Yes. To yes. I, can't remember, I can't remember what they're called. I, I know what you're talking about. So the thing is like these, the photos that actually acts as of a video kind of, but like it's a still photo that kind of transforms and has something else going else in the background that really draws the eye into the post. Right. Is that what you're? No, 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 no. It's, okay. it's like, it's, it's like using like an Instagram filter, but it's just a little bit more, um, it goes through a lot more processes, um, and you know, you can really theme out every picture that you use if you use like this similar sort of, um, filter over the top. Yeah. And he was talking about using that compared to using like a filter on your phone, you know, these are better and they can do a better job of like making your picture look awesome. Yeah. But if you use the same, like if you pick like two filters or two, whatever, whatever these things are called, um, yeah. to run your picture through, yeah. um, that helps create the theme as well. And he also talked about like sizing it as well. So it like fits up the full screen when people are scrolling through the feed as well. Yes. So yes, I love that question. And I love that. And it's so true. Um, It's just extra stuff that we, that, that most people do to try to make their image very unique. And, and most people, like I said, I try not make it feel like work, right? Like, doing that that process you were saying that using a software to go onto your computer editing the 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 whole entire content and then uploading or transferring to your phone and then post it and then that's just you know some people 
some people love that. Some people love to do the work on that. And, and like I said, it's for me, it was like, I, I try not to make it feel like work personally. I just want to pull something, play around with it. And if it's a high quality photo, so this is what I, my workflow is, is I take a high quality photo on my phone instead, not, not through the Instagram app itself, but through mm-hmm. the actual photo, uh, the, the camera, take that and adjust the colors on there and then adjust it again on top of Instagram as well. Okay. Hope that answers your question. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, it does. Um, I okay. think, I mean, uh, to me, it wouldn't feel like work just because I have an iPhone and a Mac. So like swapping and uh, like, like sending yeah. photos to them are pretty easy. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, you know, you can put like a really nice looking filter at a touch of a button, yes. as long as you've got the right, um, I have to find out what the name of them is called, but yeah, you know, it's, it's actually in Photoshop that you do it. And yeah, he's talking about you size it to this thing. So it fills up the whole touch screen and then literally airdrop it back to your phone to upload to Instagram. Yeah. I love that. And if you and do several at a time, it, you know, you can get like an entire week's worth of pictures done in like five minutes. Yeah. I'm all for that. hundred percent. Like if it doesn't Sorry. for you, I know you Luke, where it's like, you know, for you, it wouldn't feel like work because like you do have a Mac. I switched over to Android and I, it's a pain in the butt, but, um, but it's, it's definitely something that I recommend as well too. If you have the softwares, I just personally didn't have the softwares and everything. So I'm trying to make it more uh, generic and more, more my own way, right? It's just because like, it's just, for me, it's not about, it's a, done is better than perfect in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, Julie, go ahead. I, I know you had a question. Yeah. Do you have any recommendation on like, okay, so I'll take a photo and then I'll, I'll, change the um, contrast manually, right? Or whatever the brightness. And um, then I post one picture and it looks really good. And then I post the next picture and it doesn't look so, or it looks fine separate, but as soon as you put it in your like nine, it looks a little uh, off. So do you have any recommendations on how to keep consistency within your posts? So for me, it really ties back to um, just playing around with, with your, with your adjustments. So I take notes on what kind of adjustments I do and then, and then seeing how the post did last time. And then looking at the colors that surrounding it. Right. Because like, I know, I know what you, I know exactly what you're talking about for me. Like, um, if I look through my post there, there were some posts that I didn't like beside each other as well too. And, and if it doesn't feel right, see if you can go back and adjust it again, or, or just because it's a huge experiment. Um, what kind of, I just want to take a look at actually the example, actually. Can I see? Oh, I can find some. I'll send them to you later if you want. Um, okay. But it's usually when it's food related. Yes, I know. Cause like food related, they have colors that do conflict with each other. Um, it's something that I studied in marketing personally myself where like some colors do conflict with one another once they're beside each other. Um, it's more about learning the, the, I guess like what colors complement with one another, right? So what I've seen a lot of people do, and I, I don't know if like it's, there's no right or wrong way because like I said, it's all based on how you curate it, but people post their content in only black and white. <laughs> and every time I look at that, I'm just like, yeah, you know, it, it's, there's a theme, there's a color and everything. Like, sorry, there, there's themes and everything there, but it's just again like just based on your, your perception and how you want to curate it, right? So, um, yeah, please send it to me. I would love to take a look at that. And then I'll, I'll, I'll dive into more of that with you because like I said, it's just, I can definitely see what I can do and what I can recommend with that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so any other questions? Anyone? Good. All right. So we're going to dive into, so who's done stories so far? Raise your hands or say yes. You, you made me do my first one. Last week. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> well, I know Julie did stories cause I seen her doing stories, um, you know, a few times. So, you know, you guys know Snapchat, right? Snapchat. So Snapchat is basically stories. Stories is Snapchat. <laughs> Other way around. Okay. I'm going to try to see. Oh, sorry. One second here. Why am I lagging? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys here, put you guys over here. Okay. So Instagram stories, what are stories? How to use them? And why should we use them? Is this questions I get a lot. Um, same, similar to Snapchat, you get 15 second videos that only, is only viewable for 24 hours. And it's a great way to connect with the audience. The only differentiation between Instagram stories and Snapchat is that people literally have to add your Snapchat code. Whereas Instagram stories, people could just find you sporadically in the middle of like in just nowhere. Like they just 
see your content, they like it, and if it's related, then it shows up. So this is how it shows up for me. Um, so you guys can see it shows up in just a colored bar. Allows you to showcase your life, connect with your audience more, similar to Snapchat. And if you have any news that you'd like to share with your audience as well too. So, so Snapchat is, so, so rule of thumb, how I think about, uh, sorry, uh, of uh, Instagram stories is the content that you would not post onto your, um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, I love this guy. Um, he calls it like the, the excess content that you wouldn't post on your actual Instagram. It's stuff that you would post on there. Luke. So, so basically anything that wouldn't fit the theme of your page. Exactly. So exactly. That's exactly it. So like most of my audience knows that I love donuts. All right. I love taking sh like, you know, shirtless pictures. Luke calls me on on it all the time. And, <laughs> and like, like I said, like it's something like I wouldn't post a donut onto my page because it's all about motivation, more uh, self-improvement and stuff like that. Right. So like it's stuff that you're, your audience is able to connect with you to see another light because again, this Instagram offers so many features for you to connect with your audience because you become almost a brand with them, right? They know you, they, they feel like they know you. Like I have people telling me on my Instagram, like, you know, when, when I meet you, Paul, I think I know who you are already. I get that. And it's so cool to know that. And only just takes practice, right? It only takes time and takes practice for you to just jump on. If you have like 15 seconds, if you're eating lunch, Showcase your lunch, showcase something, showcase, you know, Luke just got a new car, right? Showcase that car, take a 15 seconds, just literally you walking into the car and just turn on the key. Guys, I'm about to take off here, right? So make this really fun. Make this about you. It really is about you. And then this is how you bring in more people. Not Snapchat. Okay, so it's not Snapchat. Remember that. So again, downside, it's like Snapchat, literally you would have to add each other's codes, like, you know, scan it and then, for me, it's very limiting, I find, and you're unable to be, be discovered by other people. Um, so we're gonna go briefly on this, the features in stories, and I love this part, okay? So Instagram stories, you're able to add locations, hashtags, custom fonts and, and colors, and everything, it's just emojis and just VR filters and everything in there. All right, so again, we're gonna briefly go through that. Okay, give me one second, guys. Why is it? Do you guys see Luke's face or my face? On the side. Your face. Oh, my face? Okay, good, good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's weird. I see Luke's face. I want to see myself. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue. So. Eager. <laughs> <laughs> Promise is not. Um, so location features. So you're able to showcase your location and where you are, where the story is being taken. Um, this is a great way to promote promote your business locally. Um, again, I'm gonna bring up my example. Um, our mutual friend uh, Julie is um, Katie. She works at ten. Or she owns Ten Eighteen. So whenever she does a post, she always tags London, Ontario, or Toronto, or somewhere local. For me, it's the exact same thing. Like whenever I go to the gym in Toronto, I would tag Toronto. I would tag wherever I go because that way it offers more exposures and more people to check out your page. This adds you into a pool of let's just say for example it'll be toronto canada right i use that location and then i upload a story and that story will potentially go sometimes it shows up sometimes it doesn't show up it's quite odd but once it shows up on there people can actually has a they have a chance if the content is compelling it's good they will actually i've done this a few times where i, I would press back and then click onto the bio uh, so the, the the top left hand corner of the story and then you can actually look that, at that person's content and whether you follow them or not. This happens a few times with me where it's just like, oh my gosh, I love this person's content. I love their energy. I love something about this person. And it only took that 15 seconds to really drew me in, right? And this is how local businesses tie it together, even if their location is somewhere that's difficult to get to, right? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, cool. Hashtags. So, I, I try not to overboard it with hashtags. I want to use it more often as I, as I could. Um, you're able to add a hashtag into your Instagram stories as well. So that way that story can show up. So let's just say I'm taking a, a story and they're like, hey guys, this is my food. I'm going vegan. And then a hashtag vegan. And then that goes into the exact same thing. If you guys go into the hashtag, it'll show up like a story section on the top center of that post. I don't know if you guys can check it out. Um, 
let's just do this. Let's do an example right now. If you guys pull up your phones. All right. And then just go to any of your posts or go to a hashtag. And then you guys can see, hopefully I can show you guys here. Okay. Let me, ah, uh, okay. It's right there. So I guess I went motivational and then it shows up right there. Luke, you look like you look like you didn't find it. So is that when you've searched for hashtag? Yeah. So any hashtag and then just go into their stories. So right here, I wish I could show you guys. And then I click the story and it'll literally show up the stories that people add in into this pool. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So using your, your hashtags in your stories will put you in there and it offers more traffic towards your direction. Coolio? Mm -hmm. Cool. Love it. I love it. All right. Emojis. So <laughs> it's based on your preference, really. Um, I, I love using emojis. I like using uh, jiffies. So we're going to go back to this last post right here. Can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. Oh, this picture was an old one. Um, so this right here. So this is the location. How you get to this screen is once you get, once you take your story, you swipe up. You swipe up and you'll, it'll, show you all this right here location your time whatever you do the hashtags you do polls as well too then then bottom where it says thursday right here should be another icon that says jiffies and it's just just making more you i always try to add jiffies or jiffies or gifts is that what they're called in giffies i think i call them gifts gifts i guess I, gifts. i do too again okay i don't know why <laughs> gifts okay so 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 you can add it in, make it all you. I always put like really funny characters to make this fun and, and make this really exciting. Um, we're going to go over here. So I do this a lot. I do this a lot. And I only, I do this to grab the attention of an influencer. I, I either show people appreciation. I tag people if I'm with that person. If I'm, me and Luke or Julie are hanging out today, uh, I would tag them on there as well too. So tag another Instagram account again. So that way it ties both back together to their page as well. So like if me and Luke are together and Julie were hanging out or something, I'd be like, hey, you know what? We're here with our friends. And then add your Instagram page. And then they generally would go into your accounts as well too. And they'll be curious. That happens all the time. And this is how you share the love, share the love guys. So, and, and then another way you can use it is tagging your favorite brands, your favorite. Um, I bought a, a wallet. If I can find it, it's over here somewhere. So Luke knows this and everybody knows this. I'm going to make sure there's nothing here. Uh, so I bought a minimalist wallet. I'm going to try to get out of the screen for a second here. So I bought a minimalist wallet here and, and they're called Andar and I love them so much that I made a story. I'm going to show why, why I love it so much. Look at that. Just pops up and it's all staggered. So I love them so much that I tagged them on in my Instagram story and showing, showcasing this is my new fidget spinner. They messaged me. They loved it so much and they just sent me new products and it's on its way. Right? How awesome is that? Right? So I've heard in other scenarios some people do, will DM you, will show, will message you and say like, I really love your content. How can we help you out? And sometimes sponsors will reach out as well too. So again, there's so much flexibility with this, whereas in other platforms, you may not get that, right? All right. So back to this. So Instagram stories, this is what, these are my practices. Um, be consistent with your stories, chat with, you know, and connect with your audience. So uh, I'm always eating, a, for example, I'll go back to the donut example. I'm always eating a donut. It's funny and people love it and they want to get a donut as well too. So they, I get messages all the time like, dude, I went to grab a donut because of you <laughs> and I'm such a bad influence in that. And it's hilarious because like that just makes it really fun and just having fun with it is super key and super important, right? Making this all about you. Remember that that's my rule of thumb and yeah. Any questions? Cool. I just recorded a story just now though. Okay. I love that. See, that's, that's fun, right? <laughs> I love that. Julie, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we're going to go to live streams. Oh, live streams, live streams. So I don't do this enough and I want to do this more. Um, 
live stream. So what is it? You can literally live stream with your followers. There's no time limit. Um, once you display onto your, your page, it'll be available for 24 hours and it'll disappear forever. So sad. Um, the advantages of this is that you can use it in multiple ways. You can teach your audience something. You can do Q and A's. You can tell them about some amazing news. I just did mine recently about uh, Charity Waters and I just always jumped on and talked about the reasons why I do what I do. Um, share what you're doing and then you can do a live stream with a guest. So I've done that before with, um, with my friend Heath and it was so cool. But the thing is like the downside of this is that you can't save it for whatever reason. I'm not too sure why I'm sure they're going to change that later on, but you can't save that video. Um, yeah. So whenever you want to share something that's more than 15 seconds, um, keep up. My rule of thumb is always keeping it under 10 minutes as best as I can, unless it's like something that's really compelling or people are loving it. Um, you know, best to use, uh, Best use of this feature, like I said, is to, to, you know, to make your audience, make sure they have something to take away. Um, I always try to teach people something, give something, see it gives people value whenever they look at my live streams, my posts, or anything like that. Um, again, remember, short attention spans, okay, guys? Uh, millennials, you know, again, I try to keep it under 10 minutes, five minutes if you can. And then just go on quickly and just do that. And then be consistent about it. I'm going to be more consistent, again. Letting, um, so having, so these are the tips that I recommend to, to make your live stream, um, more effective and have people jump into the calls more, um, and kind of experiment with this more and more personally myself, um, letting them know on your stories that you're going to be jumping on at a specific time, a specific date, um, keeping it, like I said, five to 10 minutes or else people are going to drop off. Same thing like YouTube, this concept really, you can take it away to most platforms. Um, make sure you interact with your audience, right? That's attending in there. So that way you can build a great relationship with them. Uh, whenever someone asks a question, I always try to jump in, just look at the questions really quickly. Um, best practice in my opinion is, you know, every two weeks or so is the best because we're not trying to make it about work. I know a lot of people have run a business and, and they're very busy. I try not to make it feel like work personally myself. Um, and that's, that's, you know, like I said, do whatever you can in that. So yeah. I want you guys to later on after this to go jump onto a live stream yourself, try that, see what it's like, see the feeling of that, and then creating more stories as well too. Chat with your audience, try a live stream, see how it feels. Bam. How was that? How are you guys feeling? Any questions? How do you do the live stream with a guest? So we can do it right now if you want or something. Uh, let me see. No, I don't want to do it right now. I just want to know how. <laughs> okay. So, so if you jump into the live stream, there is a, you know, <clears throat> smiley face icon that's, that has a guest. So that's what it means. It's in the bottom. If I remember off the top of my head, bottom right hand corner, it'll show two little circle, circle, happy faces. Uh, I'm trying to find the option. Video. No. Almost. So I'll look it up literally right now. Let me see here. So it'll be right here. So it'll be, oh, I'm going to show you guys the process. I'm going to make videos on this. Um, Did you get it? Yeah, I was pressing the wrong button for the video. Okay. So it'll say start live video and then you can ask a guest to join you. Um, that person has to be in the call though. So like I have to jump into the call with you, Luke, for, yeah. for me and you to be talking as a guest. I personally have a friend of mine. She uses it just to uh, talk to her fans, talk to her audience, and then just kind of jump off it really quickly. Give people like five minutes to just ask questions. Um, it's a fun way, like I said, to interact with your brand, your audience, your fans, and just develop great relationship with your peeps, right? Okay, so they have to be watching the video. Yeah. And then you can invite them in. Exactly. Gotcha. Any other questions? Anyone? Julie? No, I had the same question. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I love it. So yeah, so this is basically that. Um, so like I said, like try, try yourselves, experiment and experiment. The key part is just theming out your page. Um, I think that's the most important part out of the whole entire three um, modules today is just because Again, people flip through content all the time. I've seen people at like the food court at the mall literally flipping through. So you have like one to five second or so just to see people's content, right? And, um, and then it's just something that makes and breaks 
them following you or not. Cool. 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 Yeah. I've always, I've always wondered what's the point of stories, but now mm -hmm. you explain the like theming out the posts and or theming out your page. Yeah. It kind of makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Because I guess, yeah. So, yeah. So, just something again, like Gary Vaynerchuk quotes it perfectly. He's like, this is the content that you would put on there that you would never post. Well, it's not what you would never post, but you would. It just doesn't fit your theme. Exactly. It doesn't fit your theme. Like if you're having like a, an awesome meal or something like that and you're all about photography, then yeah, there doesn't, there's no rhyme or rhythm with that. Right. So cool. Makes sense. All right, guys. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, I figured I figured out the name of those things. They're called it's Lightroom, not Photoshop, and they're called presets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So, so they're using those to create the theme. So the so one thing I know I know I've done iOS and and Android, and so light. I think there is Lightroom. There's a Lightroom app for Android right now. I have it right now, and I'm not sure about Apple. Uh, iOS, I can actually look it up later on and see because like there's an app with them that kind of plays around with it. But I just feel like it's like just one more step that I have to do. And mm -hmm. for me, it's just like, for me personally is having it at the content out there and having it done, it's better than perfect because like, yeah. if it just starts feeling like work, because this isn't, this isn't what it's not about, right? For me, I personally feel like you're, you're almost kind of holds you back a little bit from, from really showing your true colors. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So guys, that's basically it. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, let me know. I am going to stop this. Cool.